Hi there, Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, a little review here. These are the well known for anyone in the HEMA community coding gloves, and um, they're developed by St. Mark um, Fencing and um, run by my good friends um, Anders Linnard and Axel Pettersson, both famous longsword fencers, and indeed they do other weapons as well, but I think most famous for longsword, running the Gothenburg Historical Fencing. Um, school and they uh, also run Swordfish, um, one of the biggest and most famous annual HEMA events and basically what I think considered by most people the kind of Olympics as it were of um, HEMA competition. Now these gloves, let's talk about this, so first of all these are primarily designed for longsword and um, Longsword gloves, longsword suitable gloves, are a sort of holy grail in HEMA. Um, I, <laughs> I never really managed to find any gloves that worked for me. Um, previously in my club we had, I think, every single type of conceivable longsword glove that's been made um, over the last few years and I have not been very impressed by any of them, to be honest. Um, partly for this reason, I've not done very much longsword fencing for about the last two years. Um, uh, and actually I've just started again recently and it's quite, uh, it's quite bizarre actually to get back into having stepped away from it for so long. I've been doing sword and buckler, sabre, rapier, small sword, spear, dagger, everything else basically, um, except, and even sword and shield, everything else except for longsword. But I've recently come back to longsword thanks to these. Now, um, so just to talk a little bit about other gloves around, I think for a long time the benchmark for longsword sparring gloves has been the so-called sparring glove, um, which um, I think is an awful name <laughs> uh, in, in marketing terms because of course all of these gloves made for HEMA are referred to as sparring gloves, so having a product called sparring glove is not very useful. Um, but they kind of set the benchmark, however for lots of us we didn't really want mitten um, gloves, mitten gauntlets essentially. And whilst they're certainly good at the job and they've got great wrist articulation and all this kind of stuff, um, lots of us simply just didn't really like those gloves or get on with those gloves and we wanted something with fingers. Now that makes it more challenging. If you're going to make something that can take the force of full power tournament longsword blows on your fingers, you need some quite good um, technology and engineering, should we say, put into those fingers. And that's what they have achieved, what's, what St. Mark, Anders and Axel have achieved with these um, coning gloves. Now this is the second generation of coning gloves, that's um, something I should have said right at the start. You'll notice these are black, the original ones that came out were a bit bigger than this and were um, all burgundy coloured or reddish. Um, the inside is pretty much the same colour, and um, but they have, I believe, changed the type of leather that's um, used, I think both on the inside and the outside. Just to explain what these are in terms of how they're constructed, I'll just take, take one off so you can have a little look uh, inside. So, it is essentially, it might look like just a giant glove, but it's not. It's essentially a gauntlet inside a glove. So what we've got inside these fingers are hard, encasing plastic overlapping plates. Um, if we take the finger for example, it's a completely enclosed, it's got a hard end, it's got hard sides and obviously a hard top. So it's actually a cup that sits around the end of your finger and that is contained in the leather sleeve. Um, and behind that and along the finger are other plates which go around. So really it's actually inside a bit like a plastic medieval gauntlet um, with articulated plates. Even the back of the hand has plates inside it that you can feel. But then all of those are covered by this really nice, really high quality leather cover. Um, the leather not only protects the plates and holds them together, um, but of course the leather itself has a has a resistant um, quality um, and it enables some of the shock absorption to be, um, some of the force to be dispersed before it ever really gets to those plates. So it's quite a clever use of padding and plates together in, in a way that I don't know of any other gauntlets or, or sparring gloves that are quite doing it like that exactly. Um, Whilst I could say various things about the back of the hand um, and the thumb, actually that's something that lots of or quite a number of gloves do get right. Generally speaking the back of the hand is not something that usually gets broken. I personally don't know anyone who's had a broken um, finger in, in the back 
portion of their um, hand. I may have heard about one broken knuckle at one stage, um, but generally speaking, this is the easiest portion uh, to protect. The most difficult bit, if you've got fingers on a glove, are the fingers. And of course, that's one of the reasons why lots of glove designers have gone down the mitten route, because by having a mitten, it's a simple way of covering all of the fingers and um, dispersing that force rather than on individual digits but actually just over a larger surface area and that works fine in engineering terms the problem is when it comes into dexterity and being able to manipulate your fingers on the grip of a sword in the ways that you would want to do now the um, cuff so i'll just talk about the cuff briefly the cuff is actually not dissimilar to the design of something like a field hockey glove or lacrosse glove. So essentially there's nothing in there, there's a gap. This is just leather um, because frankly we've got sleeves, many people wear forearm guards as well. I don't really think you need a hard cuff um, with the amount of protection that we're wearing these days for tournaments. Um, and in a similar way to the hockey glove, you've got a band that is simply covering that junction, that gap between the main glove and the cuff. That's absolutely fine, I have no problems with that. One thing I have noticed is that whilst that gives pretty good mobility, if you've got a shorter hilted feather or longsword, as I have, so I have a so-called, what some people want to call a fiore feather, that is um, a relatively short feather shirt um, that's more more bastard sword or smaller long sword size rather than a big one with a massive great long hill, um, long grip as lots of people are using. Um, if you do have a shorter grip it does mean if your hands are quite close together particularly cutting from the left having this bulk around your wrist does mean that your wrists can conflict slightly and I must admit that so far I've been using these gloves for a couple of weeks now um, I do find it a more difficult cutting from the left than cutting from the right and this does um, influence the way I fence slightly. It means that I'm favouring techniques that move from the right rather than techniques that might move from the left. So um, that's a sort of constructive, uh, not criticism as much, but something to note um, that, the, uh, that the cuffs, whilst they enable pretty good movement, are quite wide. Um, and for me personally, you can see there, there's quite a lot more um, space around my wrist than I really need. If I was to do anything to improve these gloves, actually the only thing, this, that's why I'm mentioning it at the beginning, the only thing that I would change is to make that um, wrist joint closer to the wrist. And possibly think about um, how it articulates, um, or maybe, maybe expand the distance of the articulation and put a ring in there, um, a little bit like the, the sparring gloves, perhaps, um, the so-called sparring gloves. Anyway, that's by the by, that's for the guys, that's for Anders and Axel to decide at St Mark. Um, but this is a simple solution and that is a good thing. Sometimes simple solutions help keep, keep costs down. On the subject of costs, I should note, these are expensive gloves. They're 210 euros. So that, you know, that is expensive. However, the main pieces of protective kit, really, um, that are difficult to get right in HEMA at the moment, are gloves and masks, okay? so. If you're spending 200 euros on a mask, you're spending 200 euros on your gloves, that kind of balances, that makes sense. You might be spending 300 euros on a sword, so really, it is really, really important to protect your hands well. And if you want to have that digit manipulation, um, as most people, I think most fencers I know, do ideally want to have that, then you pay a bit extra for that because obviously it's more difficult to make finger gloves than it is to make mitten gloves. Mitten gloves are an easier solution but you lose dexterity as a result of it. Um, in terms of the protection that these give, so far, so I've been using these for a couple of weeks and I probably had about, I don't know, 10, 10 fights or something like that, um, and fantastic. I've been hit on the hand in several ways by several people, um, quite hard in a couple of cases, and it stings, you feel it, um, you don't, um, it doesn't make you sort of completely impervious to pain or anything like that. It hurts your hand, but there's no sign of bruising or injury whatsoever. Um, every part of the finger that I think is likely to get hit is protected. It's protected at the sides, very importantly. Many gloves out there don't protect at the sides, particularly the side of the little finger and the side of the index finger. So in other words, the top and bottom of your hands. Between the hands is not really very likely to get hit. It does happen, I have seen it happen, but it's pretty rare. Um, so the middle fingers, it's more about protecting the tops 
um, whereas the outer fingers, it's you've got to protect the tops and the sides. And all of the fingers need to be protected on the end, especially with medieval hilted swords. Um, it does seem that people do, it's never happened to me personally, but it does seem that a lot of people out there are getting hit on the end of the finger, and this can result in a chip of the bone uh, or a break of the end of the finger, which is not very pleasant and quite painful. <laughs> um, so, uh, also the thumbs. Um, the thumbs are fantastically protected here. Uh, as I mentioned, I think thumbs are easier to protect than the fingers in general because they're not next to any other digits. Um, but yeah, the e end protection is fantastic. Side protection, top protection, it's all good. And even up here on the top of the hand, which is one place that often gets hit, that's got very good hard protection underneath the leather. Now, one thing to note about these gloves is when you get them, if you get them, they will be stiff when you get them. And I, I'll be honest, I had these gloves for about two weeks before I started using them. Um, and during those two weeks, I did this a lot. Now, what was interesting is now they're quite soft, but when they first came, they were really quite stiff. And doing this was a fantastic forearm <laughs> exercise. Um, it was a bit like one of those squeezy forearm exercises. So actually, uh, that's no bad thing, I suppose. But what I would advise is don't necessarily expect to get your gloves into use straight away. Um, when you get them, you should expect to have a week or two weeks, depending how much you how much time you spend with them on but just walk around with them and just do this and wiggling the fingers moving the thumbs in and out another little thing i found helped just pull one of them off they come off uh, on and off very easily as well which is something else to note notice some other sparring gloves out there are a bit tricky to get on and off which is a pain in the butt it's nice when you take you can take things on and off easily but yeah when they came stiff to me one thing that i did seem to help quite a lot was take the glove off actually and scrunch it as tight as i can scrunch it into little balls and move everything and flex it and bend it around the reason for the stiffness i think um Obviously, I, I, I haven't taken these apart, so I don't know exactly how they're constructed. But I think the reason for the stiffness is just simply the leather on the outer surface is very stiff. As anybody knows, when you get new shoes, they're stiff and you need to break them in. It's the same with these. So yeah, once you get these gloves, expect to spend a week or two just softening them up. But once you do, um, and I've been, like I said, I've been sparring these for a couple of weeks now, and um, they're great. These are the first gloves that I feel safe doing steel longsword in ever, okay? Um, now, I've never owned any of the sparring gloves, for example, um, but I didn't really, the one friends of mine who had them and I tried them on, I just didn't really like them. So I never bought any for myself. So these are the first gloves I have ever felt able and safe in. Now, I did also use the, for a short period of time, I used the um, Spez Heavy gloves. Spez heavies are another type of mitten glove, and I could not get on with them at all. Um, I couldn't hold the sword properly, I, the, the wrists were horrible, the cuffs were too big. Just, uh, the, you know, fairly good value, um, and very solidly constructed. I don't think you're going to get hurt wearing Spez heavies, but I personally just couldn't use a longsword in them. I couldn't hold the sword properly. These I can because I can actually, look, I can properly make Hulk fists, Hulk smash. Um, I can properly make little fists and move all of my fingers independently and move my thumbs in and all of this kind of stuff. Right, I'm gonna finish up um, without wittering on too long, but I think one final thing to say is, for me anyway, these are longsword sparring gloves. I know that Axel has done a video where he holds a sabre and a side sword and maybe an arming sword um, with these gloves and shows different things. I do think you could use these with arming, with arming swords reasonably, that is correct. I do think you could use these for sword and buckler, although this hand probably wouldn't fit in a buckler. So probably you'd just end up using your dominant hand and the other glove would just be sitting around not getting used. Um, but I, um, I do not personally feel at all that these work for either side sword or sabre. The reason being that they are too bulky, unfortunately. And I'm mostly a sabreur, as you know, although I'm getting back into the longsword again now that I've got these, and that's really good fun, having uh, another weapon that I can spar with in an evening. Um, but I have tried to use these for sabre, and to me they're just too bulky, and I can't, get the f I can't quite get the level of manipulation on the grip, but more importantly than that, because of the width of the glove itself here, I can't fit my hand into the hilt of a, any of the sabres in my club, actually. It doesn't matter what make they are or design. 
I can't fit the hand in the grip with the thumb up the back of the back strap um, and hold it with the edge aligned. I can hold it in a hammer fist grip and use it basically like a, a stick, <laughs> like a club, but I can't do a proper sabre grip with these, unfortunately. But having said that, I have for a long time been of the opinion that I don't think it's possible, I don't think it's even physically possible, although I might be wrong, but I don't think it's physically possible to make gloves that work effectively for longsword and work effectively for sabre. They just need, you just don't need quite as much protection for sabre, but you need a lot more suppleness and the hand is in a different position on the sabre and it needs to be able to fit within the hilt. So, I'm not, I'm not disappointed at all. I think these are fantastic gloves and they're opening up the world of longsword to me, to me again, which is quite exciting actually for me. Um, and I'm now thinking about getting a new feather and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I think they're absolutely awesome gloves. I might do another review further down the line once I've been using these for a few months, but so far, great protection, great uh, mobility and grip, um, pretty good wrist mobility, although not perfect. And I personally would like to see the wrists a little bit closer fitted to the, into the wrist. Um, but by and large, I think these gloves are absolutely fantastic. And I think if you're um, wanting to get a top end glove for serious longsword, steel longsword sparring, these, I think, have got to be your go-to gloves if you want to have your fingers free, definitely. There's no other comparison, no competitor with fingers on that I've seen that I would even consider. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, follow us on Facebook, you can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.